Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you a tip to calculate standard deviation values that you can apply right now. Hi, welcome back. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome on board. And my name is Peter Tron. If you want to learn more about Open Lab Intelligent Reporting, GC troubleshooting skills, GC operational skills, hit the subscribe button now and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get started. Standard deviation is a very useful term uh, in two ways I can think of. The first one is it will tell you how much your data are fluctuating. And the second one is you can use it to calculate your limit of detection, right? So uh, let's get into Excel and perform the calculation. I'm going to open it right now. Okay, so these are the couple of input values I'm going to use for the calculation. You can input any values that you want to, and you can add or add as many numbers as you want to. Okay, so down here you have the formula of the standard deviation. Okay, I'm going to perform the calculation in a very manual way. Okay. I know a lot of you might, uh, might already know what the formula to get Excel calculated this standard deviation automatically. But to me, manual calculation is king, right? So if you know how to calculate things manually, the process to automate it, automate the calculation is just like kind of like sooner or later, you know? So pause the video now and let me know in the comment if you agree or disagree with that, okay? So, uh, so let's get uh, into the manual calculation, right? So uh, if you look at this formula out here, the first item we need to calculate is the average of individual if, if of all values over here. So that you know to come up with that, we, you need to have something like a total of all the input values, right? So this will be this one plus this one plus this one plus B6, right? And then how is how many numbers you have? So that will be one, two, three, four, right? Average is basically the total divided by the count, right? So there you have the average value. The next step is to calculate the difference between individual values over here against the average. So that would be input values minus the average. Input value minus the average. Okay, input value minus the average. Input value minus the average, right? Then the next step is just to uh, take the value and uh, power to two. And so that would be this one, power of two. So this one to the power of two. There you go. This one to the power of two. And this one to the power of two. Okay, the next step is you want to have the sum of this value, which is Right here, this one plus this one plus this one plus this one, right? And then you want to have cow minus one, which is n minus one down here. So over here we have four, so that will be three right here, right? And then you want to take the the one the total on top here minus divide by n minus one over here, so that will be this value divided by this value. Oh, sorry, that will be this value divided by this count minus one, there you go. And the last step is just to take the square root of this value. So that should be SQRT of this value, right? Right, so this is your standard deviation in the way that you do the manual calculation, right? So I, I'm just copying this data down here. So that standard deviation is here, average is here, which is from here. Then another term that uh, very useful also is relative standard deviation. That basically just the standard deviation times 100% divided by the average. So that would be a standard deviation times 100 divided by the average, right? And this would be in terms of percent, right? Okay, so that's how we perform the calculation in a very manual way. But again, if you, if you guys know about Excel, uh, there's a quick formula for you to calculate that one, so which is STDEV stands for standard deviation and you can just drag the number that you want to calculate right and average is the same average and all please value right so these two ways you can come up with the same numbers but again I, I would prefer to 
uh, to know really how the manual calculation can be done because that will be very useful when I want to configure my uh, intelligent reporting in case I need to perform a, any of these calculations. So again, to me, manual calculation is king, right? So that's basically uh, what we need to do in Excel. And let's jump right into OpenLab Camp Station. I will show you how to generate this report. The reason why we want to use OpenLab Camp Station is because over here we have only a uh, couple of values like this. And if you have want to have more, you have to perform a lot more calculation. And what if you have another, another array of value, then you have to redo the calculation all over again, right? So OpenLab Intelligent Report or OpenLab Camp Station will give you that much faster approach to perform this calculation. And the good news is it's already built in, so you don't have to create one from scratch, right? So let's get into uh, OpenLab Camp Station right now. I'm going to open up right now. Okay, so it will depend on uh, how you acquire your data, whether it was by a single run uh, or by sequence, uh, you will have different ways to generate this report. And it will also depend on your uh, configuration, whether you turn on the unique folder, sequence unique folder, and it will also depend on what version you are using. So there will be a couple of, a couple of uh, different uh, so-called checklists that you need to come up with before you can perform a calculation. But uh, I'm gonna show you two common ways that should work for most of you, right? So uh, the first one I'm going to show you is you ran the thing by sequence, okay? Okay, so when you do uh, double click on your sequence, you get something like this. These are the data in your sequence. By the way, if you don't see any of this, you can just hit this button right here, like a table over here to show you the, this table, right? So in my sequence, I have three runs. And if I turn on my uni sequence unit folder, you don't need to really know wh where it is. I mean, as long as uh, you open your folder, your, your sequence, you have three runs over here. And if this little button over here, you see you have one, two, three, the third one. If the third one is available, or if you go to sequence and you see all of your uh, options are available, you know that you are eligible to use this method, right? Okay, so it's very quick how, how to generate that report is uh, the first step is you want to go through every single of your program and verify, you know, the iteration and thing like that. And you save the method or you if you adjust anything, save the method or thing like that uh, before you proceed to uh, generate the uh, standard deviation report, right? So I'm going to go through all of this and let's say I'm happy with all of this uh, iteration. Same thing, I go through a second run. I'm happy with all of this. The third run, I'm happy with all of this as well. Okay, so once you're happy with all of this, uh, all of your data, what you need to do, the next step is very simple. You can either go to sequence over here, then you go to sequence parameters on top here. Okay, so this is your typical sequence that you, uh, you, you will see. And you will go to something called sequence, and then uh, down here you have print sequence summary report. You need to check. Uh, this uh, square box over here in order to select the thing. So select it, then you want to use, use classic reporting. We are not going to use intelligent reporting for this one because as I say, uh, this report is already built in, so you don't have to use intelligent reporting to calculate that, okay? You can use classic reporting over here and the setup button will be available for you to select. Okay, so now here you have a couple of option, options that you want to choose. So the, for standard deviation report, they will fall under seven or eight okay so seven is static calib runs calibration runs number eight is static sample runs right so you depend on your let me close this one to show you that so, so when you run your sequence you will define whether your sample is like a plan type sample type or calibration type right so let me let me show you that uh, it's under this sequence table right this, this is a this is a sample type column that you define uh, when you run your, your sample or your standard. You can select whether it's a plan, calibration, control sample, thing like that, right? So that's, that will come into play. Uh, let me cancel this and show you back this uh, parameters. Okay, sequence output over here again, Sarah. Okay, so if your sample type is uh, is calibration, you got to choose number seven. But, but for others like uh, QC or plank, or sample, you got to choose number eight. Okay, so if you don't choose the correct one, it will not sh show you the calculation. Okay, so uh, in my case, it's a blank right now, then I'm gonna choose number eight. Okay, and 
Usually, I just use the standard statistic over here, but if you want to have a little bit more information, you can select in standard statistic. But let's stick to st uh, standard one. Okay, you say okay, and then you just uh, down here you can declare, you can define whether uh, you want to report them as a file or you want to have a PDF file. Okay, so you can take the PDF and then you just name whatever you want over here. Let's say I want to put my SD over here. I'm sorry that you can't see over here, but what I type just now is my SD. Okay, then you say okay, and then uh, you want to save your sequence first before you proceed to perform to generate that report. You just hit the button over here, and then you go to sequence. You go to start processing, or you can also hit this uh, uh, little green arrow button here. So what does software do right now? You go through one by one. This is the first one, process the data, second one, process the data, the third one, process the data, and then perform the sequence summary, which is the standard derivation just now. So the next step, what you want to do is you want to go to the folder that contains your data. So let me go back to that one that is under here. So the one just now I key in was my standard derivation. This, there will be a new uh, PDF file that is just created just now. Now you just open this. And this is your standard derivation report that you have. So just now we have three runs, okay? And then these are every single compound that we have, like retention time, amount, errors. I think these two are the most important that you want to look at. And you have the mean value, which is like the average value. Then you have standard derivation, and you have RSG, uh, which is a relative standard derivation as well. So every single compound, you will have this report which is a very beautiful way to generate this one. You, you, can, be, uh, you can use this value for your limit of descent calculation, or you can just uh, look at this RT to see how many percent your value are, are fluctuating, right? So that is a very useful way to come up with this report, right? Okay, so that is the first step. Uh, so in some cases, you don't want to process all of your data in the sequence. So let's say here you have three runs where you just want to process the second one and the third one, for example. So you can do that by simply going to sequence here and you select parcel sequence, right? Hit this button and it will show you three runs and you just select the first one. Then you, you hold the control button and select another run that you want to process, which is number three right now. So I'm going to do like this and I hit run sequence. And before you do that, you have to close the PDF file just now, otherwise a new report will be created and you can't overwrite the last uh, uh, PDF file if it's open right now. So I'm going to close this uh, PDF. Okay, then I hit the run sequence button. Okay, you wait for a while. Sequence summary now. And then same thing, you go back to the folder just now and you will see there's a new uh, my SE or PDF created and you will see the time will be updated accurately. Okay, open it and right now you should have only two runs, right? So just now you select only two runs over here, it will show up here. So only two runs that you selected will be processed over here, right? So that's a very beautiful way to generate this report. All right, let me close. Okay, so the second scenario that you uh, you didn't run your data by sequence and you must uh, you run them by uh, single run, right? So that will be under this category. So when you open single runs, uh, your data will show up like this, but this uh, icon is not available. Or you go to sequence and none of these are available. So you can't really do any uh, process reprocessing of your data, right? So what you need to do, you need to have one step to do is you select the data, which is which data you want to perform the calculation you want to include in your calculation. Let's say I want all four of them. In this case, you, you highlight and select all of them over here. What you need to do, you go to sequence, then you select create new result set. Right? You hit this button here. And first of all, you browse for your method. You want to process these four data. So in my case, uh, the method is correct right now, which is m. I'm going to use this method to process my data. If not, you just hit the browse button and select the correct method that you want to. Okay. And then uh, this is a destination folder is where you want to move all this data to, right? So I'm going to put like 
uh, SD demo, something like this. Then I want to have all four data and hit OK. Then what happened is you will see there's a new folder called demo, SD demo, the one that you just created just now, will be available right here. So you double click on it, the four data you selected will be showing up like this, right? And because they are moving into something like a sequence right now, this button will be available for you, right? And the sequence, you will see all of this. And it will be the same step just now that you, you can either uh, go through every program, make sure that you're happy with the integrations, anything like that, and make adjustments if you want to. Once you're happy with that, you just simply select. Uh, if you want to process all of them, go to sequence and hit the start processing, or you hit this little icon over here. Or if you just want to process some of them, you go to sequence and do partial sequence. Select which one you want to process. Let's say I want to process the last three. Okay, I will hit run sequence, right? And then what you need to do is just go to the, 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 the folder that contains the data, which is this one in my case, and wait for the, uh, uh, the PDF file to be created. Okay. No, it's not. It's, sorry, it's not this one. It should be number two, my SD, uh, SD demo. Yes, there you go. I think I, I, we didn't set up the sequence parameter just now. Sorry for that. Okay, go to sequence output and select again. You want to select classic reporting. Go to setup and this is a sample. You want to choose number eight over here. Say okay. Let, let me show you a standard statistic. So whether you like it or not. Say okay. And then you want to want, I don't want to report to printer. I just want the PDF file. Again, I will put my SD. Again, I don't want to print individual reports for each run. Okay, I say okay. I will save my sequence and I will just go to partial sequence here. Then I process the data that I want to. One, two, three, and four. Run sequence. Then again, I will go back to this and wait for the, my PDF file. It's coming up here. Right, there you go. So I have it right now. So I'll just open it. There you go. I have only three data, injection two, three, and four just now that I selected. So this one is uh, a little bit uh, more complicated than the standard report just now. It comes with this block as well to show you the confidence interval and the value, whether how much they are varying, varying, right, fluctuating in uh, between. So, so, but again, they all come up with the standard derivation and relative standard derivation for you over here, which is very useful for you. Okay, and this calculation will be performed for every single compound for you, so which is very useful, right? So, all right, so that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, let me know if you have any problem uh, to uh, generate this report. For some of you using different version, the process may be a little bit different. If you can't find the uh, if you can't find this button, even applying the, the step that I did just now, let me know in the comment below so that I will show you another way to generate your uh, the report, uh, particularly for just for your version you are using, right? So thank you for watching and uh, do subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Okay, I see you in my next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.